Do you know the incredible story of William the Conqueror? Join us on BM Research as we explore the life and legacy of this pivotal figure in history. From his rise to power to the profound impact of the Norman Conquest, we'll uncover the fascinating details of his journey. Welcome. Part 1. The Rise of William William, known as William the Conqueror, was born in 1028 in Falaise, Normandy, to Robert I, Duke of Normandy, and Herleva, a woman of humble origins, which marked him as a bastard from the outset of his life. William's illegitimacy would later play a significant role in shaping his ambitions and his approach to power. His father, Robert, had been an influential duke, and his lineage endowed William with a claim to noble status. Yet his early life was overshadowed by the stigma of being born outside of wedlock. Growing up in a politically tumultuous environment, William's childhood was fraught with challenges, particularly after his father died in 1035, leaving him a vulnerable heir to the duchy at a tender age of just seven. This precarious situation was exacerbated by the power struggles among the Norman nobility, who were eager to exploit his youth for their own gain. Despite the odds, William was thrust into the role of Duke of Normandy, and it became clear that he would need to navigate the treacherous waters of noble politics to survive and thrive. The early years of William's rule were characterized by instability and rebellion. Noble factions, including the powerful House of Godwin, sought to undermine his authority, questioning the legitimacy of his claim to power. However, William demonstrated remarkable resilience and an aptitude for leadership. As he matured, he began to assert his authority through strategic alliances and decisive military action. One of his most significant early victories came in 1047, during the Battle of Valleyes Dunes, where he defeated a coalition of rebellious nobles. This triumph solidified his control over Normandy and marked the beginning of his rise as a formidable military leader. His success in this battle was not merely a reflection of brute strength. It showcased his strategic prowess and ability to inspire loyalty among his troops. By this time, William had garnered a reputation as a cunning and relentless warrior, laying the groundwork for his future ambitions. In addition to military engagements, William's governance style evolved as he sought to unify the duchy. He implemented reforms that strengthened the central authority of the dukedom, ensuring that power was consolidated in his hands. This included re-establishing feudal ties, granting lands to loyal followers in exchange for military service. Such policies not only secured loyalty but also facilitated the development of a more organized and stable society. His ability to navigate the complexities of feudal relationships would later serve him well in England, where similar dynamics were in play. By fostering loyalty among his vassals and eliminating threats, William effectively transformed the political landscape of Normandy. The formative years of William's leadership were marked by the influence of key figures, including his half-brother, Odo, Bishop of Bayeux. Odo was not only a trusted advisor but also a powerful noble who played a crucial role in the military campaigns and administrative matters of the duchy. William's reliance on Odo exemplified his strategy of surrounding himself with capable and loyal individuals who could assist in governance and military affairs. As the years passed, William's reputation continued to grow, leading to increased respect and fear among his peers. The combination of military success and effective governance solidified his standing as one of the preeminent leaders of his time. Amidst this backdrop of rising power, William's gaze turned toward England, where a succession crisis loomed following the death of Edward the Confessor in 1066. Edward had left no direct heir, leading to a struggle among the Anglo-Saxon nobility for control of the throne. This created a unique opportunity for William, who had long claimed a connection to the English crown through his alleged promise from Edward, as well as through his ties to the Anglo-Saxon royal family, William's ambitions began to take shape as he sought to exploit this power vacuum and establish himself as the ruler of England. 
His motivations were driven not only by a desire for power, but also by a deep-seated ambition to secure a legacy that would outlive him. As William prepared for the challenges that lay ahead, he began to rally support from other Norman lords and establish a coalition ready for an invasion. He recognized that a successful campaign would require not only military might, but also strategic alliances and careful planning. The intricate political landscape of England necessitated a thorough understanding of its key players and their motivations. As he consolidated his forces in preparation for the invasion, William continued to foster relationships with his allies, ensuring their loyalty and commitment to his cause. This process of unification would be crucial as he sought to establish a foothold in a foreign land and expand his dominion. With a growing army and a clear vision, William set his sights on the English coast, fully aware of the challenges that awaited him. The subsequent years would see him embarking on one of history's most consequential military campaigns, leading to the transformation of England and the establishment of Norman rule. The stage was set for a clash of cultures and ambitions, where the fate of a kingdom would hang in the balance. William's early life, shaped by adversity and ambition, laid the foundation for his later conquests, showcasing his resolve and capability as a leader ready to make history. Part 2. The Claim to the English Throne The year 1066 marked a turning point in the history of England and Normandy, characterized by uncertainty and ambition. Edward the Confessor, the reigning king of England, had died without a clear heir, leading to a power vacuum that ignited fierce competition among the Anglo-Saxon nobility. In this tumultuous context, William of Normandy saw an opportunity to assert his claim to the English throne. He believed he had a legitimate right to rule based on a promise purportedly made to him by Edward, a claim that would become a cornerstone of his justification for invasion. William's assertion rested on the notion that Edward had designated him as his successor, a claim bolstered by the supposed oath of allegiance taken by Harold Godwin's son, the most powerful noble in England, who had been crowned king shortly after Edward's death. This oath was significant, as it underscored the complexity of feudal loyalty and the shifting allegiances characteristic of the time. William's challenge to Harold's kingship was not merely a personal vendetta but also a calculated move in a larger game of power and legitimacy. In the wake of Edward's death, Harold Godwin's son wasted no time consolidating his power, quickly rallying the support of the Anglo-Saxon nobility and securing his coronation. This rapid ascension put him at odds with William, whose ambitions were now more than mere aspirations. They were ignited by a burning desire to reclaim what he believed was rightfully his. As William prepared for his invasion, he meticulously crafted a narrative that would resonate with his supporters and justify his military campaign. This narrative framed Harold as a usurper, emphasizing the betrayal of the oath taken to William. To garner support for his cause, William reached out to the church, recognizing its immense influence over the populace and the nobility. He positioned himself as a divinely appointed ruler, suggesting that his claim to the throne was sanctioned by God a narrative that would resonate deeply in a deeply religious society. The Pope's support became crucial for William, and he sought a papal endorsement, which he would later receive, thus legitimizing his invasion as a holy endeavor. This ecclesiastical backing not only bolstered William's claim, but also provided a moral justification for his military actions. William's preparations for invasion were extensive and well-coordinated, showcasing his strategic acumen as a military leader, he assembled a formidable force, consisting of knights, soldiers, and mercenaries, who were drawn to his cause by promises of land and riches. William understood that the success of his campaign would depend on meticulous planning and efficient logistics. Gathering ships, resources, and supplies became a top priority as he prepared to cross the English Channel, and this logistical foresight was instrumental in laying the groundwork for the invasion the political atmosphere in England was fraught with tension as William made his intentions clear through diplomatic channels, asserting his claim while rallying support from key allies across Normandy. His reputation as a warrior and a leader had reached the ears of many, and he was able to cultivate a following that believed in his vision for a united kingdom under Norman rule. As William's forces grew, so did the anticipation of conflict setting the stage for a dramatic confrontation between two powerful factions vying for control of England. In addition to military might, 
William understood the importance of psychological warfare in his campaign. He sought to intimidate his opponents while inspiring his troops through stirring speeches and promises of glory. The notion of reclaiming what was rightfully his became a rallying cry that echoed throughout his ranks, instilling a sense of purpose and determination among his followers. This sense of shared destiny would prove crucial as they prepared to face the formidable Anglo-Saxon army led by Harold Godwin's son. As the invasion drew closer, the tensions in England escalated, with Harold now faced with the daunting prospect of an impending conflict against an enemy he had dismissed as a distant threat. He had successfully defended against an invasion by Harald Hardrada of Norway just weeks earlier, and now he had to contend with another formidable foe. The rapid succession of these events placed Harald at a strategic disadvantage, as he struggled to mobilize his forces effectively to face a new adversary. William's forces finally set sail in September 1066, navigating the treacherous waters of the English Channel, with determination etched on their faces and the weight of destiny upon their shoulders, they embarked on a journey that would forever alter the course of history. Upon landing on the shores of England, the Norman forces quickly began to prepare for battle, their resolve unwavering and their spirits high. The invasion of England was no longer a mere ambition. It was a reality that would challenge the very fabric of Anglo-Saxon rule and usher in a new era of governance. As the Normans established their foothold in England, News of their arrival spread like wildfire, igniting fear and apprehension among the English populace. The clash of cultures and the impending battle would reshape the political landscape of the kingdom, as the two sides prepared to meet in a historic confrontation. William's ambitions were no longer just dreams. They were on the cusp of becoming reality, and the consequences of the impending clash would resonate through the annals of history for centuries to come. Part 3. The Battle of Hastings the decisive moment in William's campaign arrived on October 14, 1066, at the Battle of Hastings, a confrontation that would determine the fate of England. The battlefield was situated near Hastings in Sussex, where William's forces, having landed just weeks earlier, prepared to face Harold Godwinson's army, which was composed largely of experienced warriors. Harold's troops were battle-hardened, having recently defeated the Viking king Harold Hardrada at Stamford Bridge but fatigue and the swift approach of the Normans posed significant challenges. William, understanding the importance of strategy, positioned his troops on higher ground, giving them an advantageous view of the battlefield and allowing for better organization of his forces. His army consisted of a mix of infantry and cavalry, and he employed a variety of tactics designed to confuse and overwhelm his opponent. In contrast, Harold's forces relied heavily on their well-trained infantry, primarily composed of housecarls and FYRD, who were known for their loyalty and fighting prowess. As the battle commenced, the tension was palpable, with both sides eager to secure victory and assert their claims to the English throne. The Normans launched a series of coordinated attacks, utilizing their cavalry to break through the English shield wall, a formidable defensive formation that had proven effective in previous battles. William's forces employed a tactic of feigned retreats, pretending to withdraw to lure Harold's soldiers into a vulnerable position. This strategy was crucial, as it exploited the disciplined nature of the English troops, who were trained to hold their ground against direct assaults. The turning point in the battle came when William's forces managed to break the English shield wall, leading to chaos among Harold's ranks. The Anglo-Saxon warriors, initially steadfast, began to falter as the relentless Norman cavalry pressed their advantage, creating gaps in the line that would prove catastrophic. The death of Harold Godwin's son, reportedly struck by an arrow to the eye, sent shockwaves through the English forces, who lost their leader and morale in a single devastating moment. With Harold's death, the resistance among the Anglo-Saxons began to crumble, as his brothers and commanders struggled to maintain order and rally the troops. William seized the opportunity, launching a fierce assault that ultimately overwhelmed the English defenses. The battle concluded with a decisive Norman victory, marking a pivotal moment in English history that would alter the course of the nation. The significance of the Battle of Hastings extended far beyond the immediate outcome. It heralded the beginning of Norman rule in England, with William emerging as the new king. Following the battle, William's victory was met with mixed emotions across the kingdom. While many among the Normans celebrated their triumph, 
the Anglo-Saxon populace faced an uncertain future, grappling with the implications of their defeat and the loss of their king. The subsequent days saw William's forces begin to establish control over the territory, and he moved swiftly to solidify his rule in the aftermath of the battle. William's immediate actions included the construction of fortifications, which served both as a means of asserting dominance and as a protection against any potential uprisings from the English populace. He also set about appointing loyal Norman nobles to positions of power, thereby facilitating the establishment of a feudal system that would reshape the social and political landscape of England. This restructuring aimed to reward those who had supported him during the invasion while simultaneously diminishing the influence of the Anglo-Saxon nobility. As William began to integrate his rule, he recognized the importance of addressing the grievances of the English people. He sought to portray himself as a legitimate ruler who would bring stability and prosperity to the kingdom, despite the initial resentment toward Norman overlordship. To this end, he implemented policies that aimed to improve the administration of justice and land management, which were crucial in gaining the trust of his new subjects. The impact of William's conquest was profound, as it led to significant cultural changes throughout England. The introduction of the Norman language and customs began to permeate the existing Anglo-Saxon traditions, creating a fusion of cultures that would define England for centuries to come. The Normans brought with them new architectural styles, exemplified by the construction of castles and cathedrals that would dominate the landscape and serve as symbols of their newfound power. The legacy of the Battle of Hastings was also felt in the realms of governance and law. William implemented the feudal system, redistributing land and establishing a hierarchy of loyalty that reinforced his. Part 4. The Aftermath of Conquest The aftermath of the Battle of Hastings brought significant changes to England as the Norman conquest reshaped the political landscape and established a new order under William the Conqueror. As the dust settled, William understood that consolidating power was imperative to maintaining control over a newly acquired kingdom filled with potential unrest. His first actions as king included a series of strategic measures designed to establish his authority and quell any lingering resistance from the Anglo-Saxon nobility. One of William's immediate priorities was to secure the loyalty of the English population, many of whom were understandably wary of their new ruler. He began by initiating a program of fortification, constructing castles and strongholds across the kingdom to serve as both military garrisons and symbols of Norman power. These fortifications were strategically placed to control key routes and important towns, thus ensuring that William could respond quickly to any threats to his reign. In addition to fortifications, William appointed Norman nobles to prominent positions within the English administration, a move that facilitated the integration of Norman governance while also diminishing the power of the Anglo-Saxon elite. This redistribution of land and authority was essential in establishing a loyal base of supporters who would enforce William's rule in the newly conquered territory. By rewarding those who had fought alongside him, William strengthened the bonds of loyalty and created a network of vassals committed to maintaining the new order. Despite these efforts, William faced significant challenges from those who resisted his rule. Several uprisings erupted in various regions, fueled by resentment and a desire to restore Anglo-Saxon leadership. The most notable of these was the revolt of the earls in 1075 which involved prominent nobles who were discontented with William's consolidation of power and the diminishing influence of the Anglo-Saxon nobility. The rebellion was a direct challenge to William's authority, but he responded swiftly and decisively, deploying military force to quell the dissent and reassert control. William's reaction to the rebellion was characteristic of his leadership style, as he sought not only to suppress the uprising but also to send a clear message about the consequences of defiance. The rebellion was ultimately crushed, and the leaders were severely punished, which served to deter future insurrections and reinforce the idea that resistance was futile under William's rule. This decisive action demonstrated William's determination to maintain control over his newly acquired kingdom and highlighted the lengths to which he would go to secure his position. The integration of Norman and Anglo-Saxon cultures began to unfold as William implemented policies that encouraged collaboration between the two groups. He recognized the necessity of establishing a stable administration to govern a diverse populace, and he sought to blend aspects of both cultures to create a new societal framework. This process was not without its challenges, 
as tensions occasionally flared between the Anglo-Saxon populace and the Norman nobility, but William's efforts were aimed at fostering a sense of unity and shared identity. One of the key tools in this cultural integration was the establishment of the Doomsday Book in 1086. This monumental survey documented landholdings, resources, and the population across England, providing a comprehensive overview of the kingdom. The Doomsday Book was not only a tool for effective taxation and resource management, but also served to legitimize William's rule by demonstrating his control over the land and people. This meticulous documentation reflected William's administrative acumen and highlighted the importance of efficient governance in control over the kingdom. This transformation laid the groundwork for a more centralized monarchy, with William firmly at the helm, while simultaneously diminishing the fragmented nature of Anglo-Saxon rule. As the dust settled on the battlefield, it became evident that the consequences of William's victory extended beyond mere territorial conquest. The Norman invasion fundamentally altered the trajectory of English history, leading to shifts in language, culture, and governance that would resonate through the ages. The once divided Kingdom of England was now under the rule of a single powerful monarch, poised to exert influence over the British Isles and beyond. In conclusion, the Battle of Hastings was not just a military engagement. It was a defining moment that reshaped the course of history, paving the way for the emergence of a unified England under Norman rule. William the Conqueror's strategic brilliance and relentless ambition had secured his place in history as a transformative figure, heralding an era marked by both conflict and cultural synthesis. The Wake of Conquest As the years passed, William's reign continued to solidify, and he embarked on various initiatives aimed at enhancing the kingdom's infrastructure. The introduction of new agricultural practices, the promotion of trade, and the encouragement of economic development were central to William's vision of a prosperous England. By fostering an environment conducive to growth, he aimed to secure the loyalty of his subjects and ensure the stability of his rule. The cultural landscape of England underwent a profound transformation during this period, with the fusion of Norman and Anglo-Saxon traditions giving rise to a unique identity. The Norman language began to influence the English vernacular, leading to significant changes in the development of the English language. This linguistic evolution reflected the merging of two distinct cultures and marked the beginning of a new era in English history. William's reign also saw the emergence of a new architectural style characterized by the construction of grand cathedrals and imposing castles. The Tower of London, built under William's direction, became an enduring symbol of Norman power and authority, serving as both a royal residence and a military stronghold. These architectural advancements not only showcased the Normans' engineering prowess but also served as tangible reminders of the conquest and the establishment of a new order in England. By the time of William's death in 1087, the foundations for a unified England had been laid, and his legacy as a transformative figure was firmly established. The impact of his rule was felt across the kingdom, as the changes he implemented set the stage for the development of a centralized monarchy and a more cohesive society. While challenges persisted, the groundwork for a new England had been established, one that would continue to evolve in the centuries to come. In conclusion, the aftermath of William's conquest was marked by significant changes that reshaped the political, cultural, and social landscape of England. William's leadership and vision facilitated the integration of Norman and Anglo-Saxon traditions, while his administrative reforms and military prowess ensured his legacy would endure. The conquests and transformations he initiated created a lasting impact on the nation, setting the stage for future developments in English history. Part 5. The Feudal System and Doomsday Book With the establishment of Norman rule in England, William the Conqueror implemented a feudal system that fundamentally transformed the social and political landscape of the kingdom. This system was designed to ensure loyalty and service in exchange for land, effectively creating a hierarchy that defined the relationships between the king, nobles, and peasants. At the top of this hierarchy stood William himself, who retained ultimate authority and ownership over all lands within his realm. The feudal structure allowed him to delegate power to loyal nobles known as vassals, who would govern specific territories on his behalf. The feudal system required vassals to provide military service to the king, which was essential for maintaining control and defending against potential threats. In return for their loyalty and service, these nobles were granted large estates, known as fiefs, which they could manage and pass down to their heirs. 
This arrangement not only solidified William's power but also helped to ensure the loyalty of his supporters, as they were financially invested in the success of his reign. As William distributed land among his loyal nobles, he sought to diminish the power of the Anglo-Saxon nobility who had previously held sway over the kingdom. By granting lands to Normans, he created a new class of landowners who were beholden to him and committed to enforcing his rule. This strategy was effective in undermining any potential challenges to his authority, while simultaneously establishing a network of loyal supporters who would help maintain order throughout the realm. One of William's most significant administrative achievements was the creation of the Doomsday Book in 1086, a comprehensive survey of landholdings and resources across England. This monumental task was undertaken to assess the wealth and productivity of the kingdom, allowing William to implement a fair and efficient tax system. The Doomsday Book provided a detailed account of who owned what, including the extent of land, livestock, and the overall economic capacity of each estate. The survey was not only a reflection of William's desire for control, but also a means to enhance his governance and financial resources. By accurately assessing the wealth of his subjects, William was able to ensure that taxes were collected effectively, thus bolstering the royal treasury and supporting the ongoing administration of the kingdom. The Doomsday Book also served to legitimize William's claim to the throne, as it documented his comprehensive control over the land and its people. The information contained within the Doomsday Book had profound implications for the future of England, as it set a precedent for land ownership and the responsibilities of vassals. It established a clear understanding of property rights, ensuring that the relationships between lords and vassals were well-defined and formalized. This document would later serve as a vital reference point for legal disputes and land transactions, cementing its importance in English history. The feudal system and the Doomsday Book together laid the groundwork for the development of a centralized monarchy in England. This new governance structure allowed for more efficient administration, as local lords were responsible for enforcing the king's laws and maintaining order within their territories. In doing so, William was able to extend his influence across the kingdom, creating a cohesive and organized state that would serve as the foundation for future monarchs. As the feudal system took root, the roles and responsibilities of the various classes within society became more pronounced. At the top were the nobles, who enjoyed privileges and wealth, while below them were the knights, who served as mounted warriors for their lords. The peasantry, comprised of serfs and free men, formed the backbone of the feudal economy, working the land and providing the necessary labor to sustain the system. This stratification of society created a sense of order, albeit one that was heavily weighted in favor of the nobility. The influence of the Norman nobility on English culture and society began to grow as they established their own customs, laws, and traditions. This blending of Norman and Anglo-Saxon cultures led to the emergence of a unique English identity that would continue to evolve over the centuries. The introduction of the Norman language into the English vernacular was one of the most significant cultural changes as it began to influence the way people communicated and interacted. William's reign marked the beginning of a new era in English history, characterized by the dominance of the feudal system and the intertwining of Norman and Anglo-Saxon traditions. The establishment of this framework allowed for greater political stability, as the relationships between lords and vassals were codified and reinforced through mutual obligations and duties. Over time, this system would evolve, giving rise to new forms of governance and legal structures that would shape the course of England's future. In conclusion, the feudal system and the creation of the Doomsday Book were pivotal components of William the Conqueror's rule, serving as instruments of control and organization in a newly conquered kingdom. Through these initiatives, William solidified his power and laid the foundation for a more centralized monarchy, ensuring the stability and prosperity of England for generations to come. The changes he implemented during this period would have lasting effects on the social, political, and cultural landscape of the nation, marking a significant turning point in English history. Part 6. Cultural Integration and Conflict The conquest of England by William the Conqueror not only resulted in a change of leadership, but also initiated a profound cultural transformation that would have lasting effects on the English landscape. The blending of Norman and Anglo-Saxon cultures created a complex societal framework characterized by both integration and conflict. 
As the Normans established their rule, the interplay between these two distinct cultures began to shape the identity of England, leading to a unique synthesis of traditions, languages, and customs. William's approach to governance included efforts to promote cultural integration while maintaining a firm grip on power. He understood that winning the hearts and minds of the English people was crucial for ensuring stability and loyalty in his new kingdom. To this end, he sought to incorporate elements of Anglo-Saxon governance into his administration, acknowledging the strengths of the existing systems while imposing Norman practices. One of the most significant cultural shifts during this period was the impact of the Norman language on the English vernacular. The introduction of Norman French as the language of the court and administration altered the linguistic landscape of England, leading to the emergence of Middle English. This linguistic evolution was not merely a change in vocabulary. It represented the melding of two cultures, as many Anglo-Saxon words were retained while new Norman terms were adopted. This process would ultimately enrich the English language, giving rise to a rich tapestry of expression and communication. However, the integration of cultures was not without conflict, as tensions simmered between the Anglo-Saxon populace and the newly established Norman nobility. Many English people resented their subjugation and the loss of their traditional leadership, which fostered an atmosphere of hostility. Rebellions and uprisings against Norman rule were not uncommon as discontented nobles and commoners alike sought to resist the changes imposed by their new rulers. One of the most notable uprisings occurred in 1075, known as the Revolt of the Earls, when several prominent English nobles joined forces to challenge William's authority. The revolt was led by Roger de Berturi, the Earl of Hereford, and included other influential figures who felt marginalized by the Normans. Their rebellion posed a significant threat to William's rule, but he responded swiftly with military force, quelling the uprising and reinforcing his control over the kingdom. This decisive action served to deter further insurrections and highlighted the lengths to which William would go to maintain his authority. Despite these challenges, the cultural integration continued to unfold as the Normans began to settle into their new roles as rulers of England. Many Normans married into Anglo-Saxon families fostering alliances that bridged the gap between the two cultures. This intermingling of lineages created a new class of nobles who were both Norman and English, further contributing to the evolution of a shared identity. The architectural landscape of England also underwent significant changes during this period, as the Normans brought their distinctive building styles to the forefront. The construction of castles, churches, and cathedrals reflected the power and influence of the Norman nobility, with structures like the Tower of London and Durham Cathedral standing as enduring symbols of their rule. These monumental buildings not only served as military fortifications but also as centers of governance and religion, reinforcing the dominance of the Norman culture in England. As the years progressed, the blending of Anglo-Saxon and Norman traditions began to yield new customs and practices that were uniquely English. Festivals, religious ceremonies, and social gatherings incorporated elements from both cultures, creating a rich tapestry of celebration and community that reflected the diversity of the population. This cultural synthesis was evident in various aspects of daily life, from cuisine to fashion, as the Normans and Anglo-Saxons learned from one another and adapted their ways of living. Religion played a pivotal role in the cultural integration process, as the Church became a unifying force in the wake of the conquest. The Normans recognized the importance of the church in the lives of the English people and sought to strengthen their ties to it. William's reign saw the promotion of Norman bishops and clerics within the English church, which helped to reinforce the authority of the monarchy while also fostering a sense of continuity within the religious community. However, this integration of the church also brought about tensions, as some Anglo-Saxon clergy were displaced from their positions of power. Many English churches and monastic institutions faced reorganization under Norman leadership, leading to conflicts over property, wealth, and influence. The impact of these changes reverberated throughout society, as the English people grappled with the loss of their traditional religious leaders while adapting to new Norman practices. The conflict between the two cultures would continue to evolve over the years, shaping the trajectory of England's development. While the initial years of Norman rule were marked by resistance and resentment, the gradual blending of customs and traditions began to foster a more cohesive society. 
the legacy of William's conquest would ultimately give rise to a distinctly English identity that retained elements of both Norman and Anglo-Saxon heritage. In conclusion, the cultural integration and conflict that characterized William the Conqueror's reign were integral to the transformation of England. The blending of Norman and Anglo-Saxon traditions created a unique societal landscape marked by both cooperation and tension. As the kingdom navigated the complexities of its new identity, the interplay between these two cultures laid the foundation for the rich tapestry of English history that would unfold in the centuries to come. Part 7. Legacy of William the Conqueror William the Conqueror's reign left an indelible mark on the history of England, shaping its political landscape and influencing its cultural development for generations to come. His successful conquest in 1066 initiated a period of profound change, as the Normans brought with them new governance structures, social hierarchies, and cultural practices. The legacy of William's rule is multifaceted, encompassing military achievements, administrative reforms, and lasting impacts on language and society. At the heart of William's legacy is the establishment of a centralized monarchy, a departure from the fragmented rule that had characterized Anglo-Saxon England, the feudal system that William implemented redefined the relationships between lords and vassals, creating a hierarchy of loyalty and service that reinforced the power of the monarchy. By granting land to loyal nobles in exchange for military support, William ensured that his authority extended throughout the kingdom, enabling him to maintain control over a diverse and often resistant population. The creation of the Doomsday Book in 1086 stands as a testament to William's administrative acumen and his commitment to effective governance. This monumental survey not only documented landholdings and resources, but also provided a comprehensive overview of the kingdom's wealth and productivity. The information contained within the Doomsday Book served as a vital tool for taxation and resource management, allowing William to bolster the royal treasury while legitimizing his claim to the throne. William's impact on the English language and culture cannot be overstated, as the Norman conquest initiated a linguistic evolution that would forever change the way people communicated. The introduction of Norman French as the language of the court and administration influenced the development of Middle English, leading to a rich blending of vocabulary and syntax. This fusion of languages would play a crucial role in shaping English literature and communication for centuries to come. Architecturally, William's reign marked a significant transformation in the construction of castles, churches, and public buildings across England. The introduction of the Mott and Bailey castle design, characterized by a wooden or stone keep on a raised earthwork mound, served both military and administrative purposes. Structures such as the Tower of London and Durham Cathedral became iconic representations of Norman power and influence while also reflecting the evolving architectural styles that emerged from the blending of cultures. The influence of the church during William's reign also contributed to his legacy, as he worked to strengthen ties between the monarchy and ecclesiastical authority. The appointment of Norman bishops and clerics within the English church helped to solidify William's control while fostering a sense of continuity within the religious community. This relationship between the crown and the church would continue to play a significant role in English politics and society for centuries, shaping the balance of power in the kingdom. William's reign also set a precedent for succession and governance in England, influencing future monarchs and the development of the English monarchy itself. His methods of consolidating power, managing nobles, and navigating complex political landscapes would serve as a model for subsequent rulers who sought to maintain control over their territories. The establishment of a centralized government and the reliance on a loyal noble class became hallmarks of English monarchy in the years that followed. While William's legacy was largely characterized by his achievements, it was not without controversy. His conquest and subsequent rule were met with resistance from the Anglo-Saxon populace, who struggled to accept their new Norman overlords. The tensions between the Anglo-Saxons and Normans created a complex societal landscape marked by both cooperation and conflict, highlighting the challenges of integration in a newly conquered kingdom. The events of William's reign also set the stage for future conflicts, as the tensions between the monarchy and the nobility, as well as the church, continued to evolve over time. His descendants would grapple with the challenges of governance, succession, and the quest for power, shaping the course of English history for generations to come. In conclusion, 
William the Conqueror's legacy is a testament to his transformative impact on England. His successful conquest and subsequent reign established a centralized monarchy, reshaped the political and cultural landscape, and laid the groundwork for future developments in the kingdom. The effects of his rule reverberated through the ages, influencing language, governance, and society in ways that continue to resonate in modern England. Part 8. The End of an Era William the Conqueror's reign came to an end in 1087, marking the conclusion of a transformative chapter in English history. His death represented the culmination of years of conquest, governance, and cultural integration that had reshaped the very fabric of the kingdom. The legacy he left behind was one of both triumph and challenge, as the dynamics he established continued to influence England long after his passing. In the years leading up to his death, William faced numerous challenges that tested his resolve and leadership. The consolidation of power he had achieved was not without its difficulties, as tensions persisted between the Anglo-Saxon populace and the Norman nobility. His reign had been characterized by military successes and administrative reforms, but the legacy of conquest was complex, often fraught with resistance and resentment from those he sought to rule. William's later years were marked by a series of military campaigns aimed at securing his territories and quelling dissent. He faced challenges from within his own family as well, as his sons vied for power and influence in the wake of his death. The rivalry between his heirs would ultimately lead to conflicts that would threaten the stability of the kingdom he had worked so hard to establish. As William approached the end of his life, he was acutely aware of the fragility of his rule and the potential for upheaval among the nobility. His last years were spent consolidating his power and attempting to ensure a smooth succession, as he sought to prevent the kind of fragmentation that had characterized Anglo-Saxon England before his conquest. The lessons he had learned throughout his reign informed his efforts to instill a sense of loyalty among his supporters, as he sought to secure a lasting legacy for his family and his kingdom, William's death in September 1087 marked the end of an era, and the immediate aftermath was characterized by uncertainty and power struggles. His eldest son, Robert Curthose, was named Duke of Normandy, while another son, William Rufus, ascended to the English throne as William II. The division of William's holdings would ultimately lead to tensions between his sons, setting the stage for a conflict that would resonate throughout the kingdom. The rivalry between Robert and William II would result in a series of confrontations that would challenge the unity of the kingdom and the stability of the Norman rule that William had established. The struggle for power between these two brothers highlighted the complexities of succession in a feudal society, where claims to land and authority were often contested. As the years unfolded, the legacy of William the Conqueror continued to influence the trajectory of England, shaping the relationships between the monarchy, the nobility, and the church. The foundations he laid in terms of governance, culture, and society remained intact, even as the kingdom faced new challenges and conflicts. His impact on the English language, architecture, and societal structure persisted, creating a unique blend of Norman and Anglo-Saxon traditions that define the character of the nation. In conclusion, William the Conqueror's reign and subsequent death marked the end of a transformative era in English history. His legacy as a conqueror, ruler, and cultural integrator continued to shape the kingdom long after his passing, influencing the course of events for generations to come. The complexities of his rule and the challenges faced by his heirs served as a reminder of the intricate dynamics of power, loyalty, and governance that would continue to characterize England's development in the years ahead. Part 9. The Impact of the Norman Conquest the Norman conquest of England in 1066 marked a watershed moment in the nation's history, with repercussions that would be felt for centuries to come. William the Conqueror's successful invasion fundamentally transformed the social, political, and cultural landscape of England, reshaping its identity and governance. The impact of this conquest extended far beyond the battlefield at Hastings, as it laid the groundwork for a new order that would define the nation in the medieval period and beyond. One of the most significant outcomes of the Norman conquest was the establishment of a centralized monarchy, replacing the fragmented feudal system that had characterized Anglo-Saxon England. William's implementation of the feudal system created a hierarchical structure that defined relationships between the king, nobles, and common people. 
This new political organization facilitated the consolidation of power and authority, allowing William and his successors to maintain control over a diverse and often resistant populace. The feudal system established by William allowed for the efficient administration of justice and governance across the kingdom. Local lords were given authority over their territories, responsible for upholding the king's laws and collecting taxes, which reinforced William's power while also ensuring that local grievances were addressed. This arrangement not only provided stability but also created a sense of order within the realm, as the responsibilities of land ownership and service were clearly defined. The introduction of the Doomsday Book served as a pivotal instrument in the administration of William's rule. This monumental survey provided a comprehensive overview of land holdings and resources, allowing for effective taxation and resource management. The information contained within the Doomsday Book would be utilized for centuries to come, serving as a vital reference for legal disputes, land transactions, and the assessment of wealth. The meticulous documentation of the kingdom's assets reflected William's commitment to governance and efficiency, reinforcing the authority of the monarchy. The cultural impact of the Norman conquest was equally profound, as the blending of Norman and Anglo-Saxon traditions gave rise to a unique English identity. The introduction of Norman French as the language of the court and administration influenced the development of the English language, leading to the emergence of Middle English. This linguistic evolution not only enriched the vocabulary and syntax of English, but also reflected the complex interplay between the two cultures, creating a tapestry of expression that would shape literature and communication for generations to come. Architecturally, the Normans left an indelible mark on the landscape of England, as they introduced new building techniques and styles that transformed towns and cities across the kingdom. The construction of castles, churches, and public buildings became a hallmark of Norman influence, with structures like the Tower of London and Durham Cathedral serving as enduring symbols of their power. These monumental edifices not only showcased the engineering prowess of the Normans, but also reinforced their authority and presence throughout the realm. The integration of Norman and Anglo-Saxon cultures also extended to social customs and practices, as the fusion of traditions created a new cultural framework that defined life in England, Festivals, religious observances, and daily life began to incorporate elements from both cultures, fostering a sense of community that transcended the divisions of conquest. The blending of customs and practices laid the groundwork for a shared identity that would continue to evolve over time, contributing to the richness of English culture. William's conquest also had significant implications for the Church in England, as the Normans recognized the importance of ecclesiastical authority in the lives of the people. The promotion of Norman clerics and bishops within the English church helped to solidify the connection between the monarchy and the church, reinforcing the idea of divine right and legitimizing William's rule. This relationship would continue to shape the political landscape of England for centuries, as the balance of power between the monarchy and the church remained a critical aspect of governance. In conclusion, the impact of the Norman conquest was multifaceted and transformative, reshaping the social, political, and cultural fabric of England. The establishment of a centralized monarchy, the introduction of the feudal system, and the blending of cultures created a new order that defined the nation for generations to come. William the Conqueror's legacy as a transformative figure is evident in the enduring changes he initiated, marking a significant turning point in English history. Part 10. William's Enduring Legacy William the Conqueror's enduring legacy is a testament to his impact on England and its trajectory through history. His successful conquest in 1066 not only changed the course of the nation, but also set in motion a series of events that would shape the development of the English monarchy, society, and culture for centuries to come. The ramifications of his reign are still evident in the political and social structures that define modern England. At the core of William's legacy is the establishment of a centralized monarchy, which replaced the fragmented power structure that had characterized Anglo-Saxon England. His implementation of the feudal system created a hierarchical society where loyalty and service were exchanged for land and protection. This new order allowed for the efficient administration of justice and governance, ensuring that William and his successors could maintain control over a diverse and often resistant populace. The creation of the Doomsday Book was another significant aspect of William's legacy, 
providing a comprehensive record of land holdings and resources that facilitated effective taxation and governance. This monumental survey not only legitimized William's rule, but also established a precedent for land ownership and administrative efficiency in England. The Doomsday Book became a vital reference for legal disputes and land transactions, reflecting the importance of documentation in the governance of the realm. William's influence extended to the cultural landscape of England, as the blending of Norman and Anglo-Saxon traditions gave rise to a unique identity that defined the nation, the introduction of Norman French into the English vernacular led to the emergence of Middle English, enriching the language and shaping literature for generations to come. This linguistic evolution not only reflected the fusion of cultures, but also laid the groundwork for the development of a rich literary tradition that would flourish in the years that followed. Architecturally, William's reign left a lasting mark on the English landscape as the Normans introduced new building styles and techniques that transformed towns and cities across the kingdom. The construction of castles, churches, and public buildings served as symbols of Norman power and authority, while also reflecting the evolving architectural styles that emerged from the blending of cultures. Structures such as the Tower of London and Durham Cathedral became iconic representations of the enduring influence of the Normans on the English landscape. William's legacy also extended to the realm of governance, as the centralized monarchy he established became a model for future rulers. His methods of consolidating power, managing nobles, and navigating complex political landscapes would influence the strategies of subsequent monarchs, shaping the course of English history for generations to come. The foundation laid by William allowed for the evolution of a more cohesive and organized state, which would continue to develop in response to the challenges of governance. In the years following William's death, the complexities of power dynamics between the monarchy, nobility, and church continued to unfold, often reflecting the tensions that had arisen during his reign. The legacy of conquest and cultural integration remained a significant aspect of English society, shaping the relationships between different groups and influencing the course of events in the kingdom. In conclusion, William the Conqueror's enduring legacy is characterized by the transformative impact he had on England and its trajectory through history. His successful conquest, establishment of a centralized monarchy, and integration of cultures created a new order that defined the nation for centuries to come. The ramifications of his reign continue to resonate in modern England, highlighting the significance of his contributions to the development of the kingdom and its identity. Part 11 the legacy of power and governance. William the Conqueror's rule established a new framework of governance that would influence the political landscape of England for centuries to come. His successful conquest in 1066 not only altered the hierarchy of power, but also set in motion a series of administrative reforms that aimed to centralize authority and create a more cohesive state. The feudal system that he implemented created a structured hierarchy where land ownership and loyalty became pivotal components of governance. This system allowed for efficient administration and helped to stabilize the kingdom amidst the challenges of a diverse and often resistant populace. The feudal system delineated clear roles and responsibilities among the nobility, with William at the apex of this new order. Nobles were granted land, known as fiefs, in exchange for their military service and loyalty to the king. This arrangement not only solidified William's control, but also fostered a network of support among the nobles, who were now financially and politically invested in the success of his reign. The loyalty of the nobles was crucial, especially given the potential for rebellion from the Anglo-Saxon population that had previously held power. William's governance was characterized by a commitment to documentation and oversight exemplified by the creation of the Doomsday Book. This monumental survey, completed in 1086, provided a detailed account of land holdings, resources, and the population throughout England. The Doomsday Book served as an essential tool for taxation and resource management, enabling William to efficiently collect taxes and allocate resources for the kingdom's defense and administration. The meticulous record-keeping reflected William's administrative acumen and laid the groundwork for a more structured and organized government. Beyond taxation and land management, William's reign also saw significant legal reforms that would shape the administration of justice in England. He sought to establish a consistent legal framework that would apply to all subjects, regardless of their status, helping to create a sense of order and fairness within the realm. 
This legal structure, combined with the feudal system, reinforced the idea that the king was the ultimate arbiter of justice and governance. The principles established during this period would resonate throughout English law for centuries to come. William's emphasis on strong central authority also had profound implications for the relationship between the monarchy and the church. He understood the significance of ecclesiastical power in medieval society and worked to cultivate a cooperative relationship with church leaders. By appointing loyal Norman bishops and clerics to positions of influence within the church, he reinforced the connection between the crown and religious authority. This relationship not only legitimized his rule, but also ensured the church's support in maintaining order and stability across the kingdom. The impact of William's governance extended beyond his immediate reign, as the systems and structures he established became foundational for future monarchs. His successors would draw upon the framework he created to navigate the complexities of ruling a diverse kingdom. The centralized monarchy he initiated would evolve over time, shaping the trajectory of English governance and society. In conclusion, the legacy of William the Conqueror in terms of power and governance is characterized by the establishment of a centralized authority that sought to integrate a divided kingdom. His administrative reforms, including the feudal system and the Doomsday Book, laid the groundwork for a more organized and efficient government that would influence England for generations. William's reign marked a significant turning point in the evolution of the English monarchy and its relationship with the nobility and the church. Part 12. Cultural Transformation and Identity The cultural transformation that followed the Norman conquest of England was profound, shaping the identity of the nation for centuries to come. As the Normans established their rule, a blending of cultures began to unfold leading to a unique synthesis of Anglo-Saxon and Norman traditions that would define medieval England. This cultural fusion was evident in various aspects of daily life, including language, architecture, and societal customs. One of the most significant impacts of the Norman conquest was the introduction of Norman French as the language of the court and administration. The elite and nobility began to communicate in Norman, leading to a gradual influence on the English language itself. This linguistic evolution saw the emergence of Middle English, characterized by a rich tapestry of vocabulary and syntax that blended elements from both Anglo-Saxon and Norman languages. The interaction between these languages would ultimately enrich English literature, poetry, and communication for generations. Architecturally, the Normans left an indelible mark on the landscape of England. The introduction of the Romanesque style brought about the construction of grand cathedrals and imposing castles, which became symbols of Norman power and influence. Structures such as the Tower of London and Durham Cathedral showcased the engineering prowess of the Normans, while also reflecting the melding of cultural styles that emerged from the conquest. These monumental buildings served both as fortifications and as centers of governance, marking the presence of Norman authority throughout the kingdom. The blending of cultures extended to societal customs and practices, as Anglo-Saxon and Norman traditions began to intermingle. Festivals, religious observances, and daily life saw the incorporation of elements from both cultures, fostering a sense of community and shared identity among the populace. This intermingling created a vibrant tapestry of customs that reflected the diversity of the kingdom, as different groups learned from one another and adapted their ways of living, Religious practices were also significantly influenced by the Norman conquest. The church became a central institution in medieval society, and the Normans recognized the importance of ecclesiastical authority in maintaining order. By appointing Norman bishops and clerics to key positions within the English church, William sought to solidify the church's allegiance to the crown, while also promoting the integration of Norman practices into the religious framework of the kingdom. The legacy of this cultural transformation was multifaceted, as it shaped the identity of England and its people in profound ways. The blending of Anglo-Saxon and Norman traditions laid the groundwork for a distinct English culture that would evolve over the centuries. This cultural evolution was characterized by a unique combination of influences that defined English society, literature, and governance. In conclusion, the cultural transformation that followed the Norman conquest was a defining aspect of William the Conqueror's legacy. The melding of Anglo-Saxon and Norman traditions created a rich and diverse identity that would shape the course of English history for generations to come. Language, 
architecture, and societal customs reflected this transformation, illustrating the enduring impact of the Norman conquest on the cultural landscape of England. The fusion of these cultures ultimately contributed to the emergence of a distinctly English identity, one that would continue to evolve and thrive in the years ahead. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the life of William the Conqueror. His legacy continues to shape England today, influencing culture, governance, and society. If you enjoyed this exploration, don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more captivating stories on BM Research. See you next time.